Well, Prize Waterhouse Coopers has completed its investigations into the controversial SNIT software scandal and is presenting its findings to the Social Security and National Insurance Trust today, February this year. The Economic and Organized Crime organization Iyoko also presented its findings on the $72 million digitization project executed by SNITs after 15 persons were interrogated. SNIT later contracted PricewaterhouseCoopers to independently audit the contract perceived to have been unnecessarily expensive. Uh, well, that presentation is being done today live and we join in uh, that press briefing. Uh, Kwame Adukufo speaking now. To this end, the board and management initiated a national competitive tender in May 2017 to select a suitable audit firm to undertake independent review and baseline study of the trust. Pricewaterhouse emerged the winner and after extensive consultations and reviews, a contract was signed with Pricewaterhouse on 7th August 2017. The document which is being presented this morning is the outcome of that contract. The board and management would like to take this opportunity to express our deep appreciation to Pricewaterhouse for the report. It is the hope and expectation of the trust that the results of this review will provide the basis for the board and management to assess the adequacy and effectiveness of existing processes, systems, and infrastructure in relation to the vision and strategy of the new leadership team. Here I'm talking about the board and the management. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, SNIT is the first year administrator of Ghana's social security and pension scheme responsible for the pensioner, the victims of occupational incapacity and their dependents in times of financial need as prescribed by the nation's pensions laws. Ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize with all the authority I can master that the current board and management take our responsibilities very seriously. When I'm talking about the pensioner, the worker, and their dependents, we take the, our responsibilities very seriously, and because of that, we've engaged Prester House, and in times past, we might have heard of our involvement with Yoko. The idea is to sanitize it so there will be greater credibility with the Ghanaian public. SNIT has been perceived as having improper management practices, imprudent investment, financial irregularities, and other antisocial activities, which collectively acted as a drain on the resources of the trust. This is what people believed. All these negative practices cannot be completely corrected in one year. We've tried very hard, but we can't claim to have corrected everything. But a number of positive corrective measures have been introduced to sanitize the practices and procedures that give the trust such a negative image. We have cooperated with Yoko in the past year and will continue to cooperate with all law enforcement agencies and investigative bodies in the pursuit of their duties. Our doors are open, our books are open. I have nothing to hide, and I'm sure our colleagues have nothing to hide. Even here, Buddy here is an investigative journalist. He can uh, enroll and come and see the work we are doing here, and you see that the proper thing is being done. This engagement with Price House and the report we are receiving this morning is a move in the same direction. An initiative to direct SNIT along the path of ethical, best ethical practices and enhanced financial sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, many positive achievements have taken place in the trust in the last year. It is the policy of the board and management to work closely with organized labor. 
and contributors to ensure that the Ghanaian worker, and for that matter, the pensioner, gets a decent pension after retirement to enable him or her live with dignity. Sometimes we hear reports about state not being caring enough and the pensioners being given peanuts. That is not completely true, but perception is very important. And we believe it's the duty of the board and management to make sure the pensioner gets the best deal possible. But having said that, I want to go and record, ladies and gentlemen, to emphasize that whatever is paid as benefits should be such as to not to undermine the financial sustainability of the pension scheme in the medium and long term. In other words, whatever is paid should be such that in five years, SNIT will still be existing. Ten years, still SNIT will still be in existence. So it's coded, but I'm sure you all understand what I want to say. The board and management are making efforts to increase the coverage of the scheme to include the informal sector. Sometimes people ask, what about the market women? What about the fisher folk? What about the cocoa farm? We have nothing against them. And in fact, it's the intention of the trust to expand coverage so that in the medium term, all of them will become beneficiaries of the trust. But it will take a lot of organization to do that. The need for the trust to cut overhead costs and reduce administrative and personal costs are also being pursued. Again, the perception in the public mind is that we sit here to chop as the pensioner's office. It's not completely correct, but we believe perception is so important, we must do something about it. And I'm giving the assurance that the board and management are working very hard to make sure we cut down overheads so that the pensioner gets maximum benefit for his or her labor. The board and management are taking the necessary actions to ensure that investments of the trust are managed effectively, efficiently, on high level of integrity. I'm just a chairman. We've got the active members, the DG and his deputies here. They really are going to take care of the, the performance this morning. These are introductory remarks. Nevertheless, I'm very happy you have attended in such large numbers. I'm happy to see all of you at Pension House this morning. And I hope from time to time we shall get the opportunity of interacting with the press. Thank you for coming and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. All right, this morning the um, report is to be received from Price But before we do that, we'll take some remarks from the team lead, Mr. Michael Asiedu. So now the team lead for Price Waterhouse will give us his yes. remarks. Then we'll go on to the presentation of the report. Thank you. Mike, my much I look. You can come. No, you need to speak through the mic. They can move the mic. Okay, please. Oh, he should. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you want to say that? Oh, no, I'm going to say that. Okay. Okay. First team, uh, we'd like to say thank you to the board and management for the opportunity that was accorded us to contribute uh, to this process of ensuring that the trust is able to meet its objective by uh, providing us that opportunity to perform this assignment. As you did say, indeed, in August, you awarded us a contract to perform the independent assessment and baseline review of the trust from the three years up to December 2016 and then the three months up to 31st of March 2017. Uh, we commenced the exercise and uh, as part of the process did meet various levels of management to obtain information that helps us to establish the current state of uh, the trust. We did uh, compare the current state of the trust with benchmarks that we have developed in the four areas of IT review, the human resource review, the financial management review, and then the internal controls assessment. As part of that process, we did identify certain gaps and also identified certain uh, areas where we believe there were strong systems in place. 
We, in our report, have uh, cataloged the gaps that were identified, uh, recommendations that we believe, if they are considered, will help the trust uh, to become a lot more competitive in its uh, uh, activities. So this morning, Mr. Chair, we are happy to present uh, that uh, report formally to you. It is a bulky report. The report is structured in five sessions uh, with uh, some appendices. Uh, together, it's about 340 plus page document, it's a, a big one. But why we went that route is to provide as uh, much information as we considered relevant so that it helps with your own review and then also helps in the next line of action that uh, the board would like to take in terms of implementing uh, systems that can improve the efficient running of the trust. So once again, uh, on behalf of the PwC team, we say thank you very much for the opportunity. And this morning, I present to you a copy of the 340-page document. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I promise to give each of you a copy of the report. But it's so bulky, I would need a wheelbarrow to, to, give, to carry the books. So we are just going to talk and there will be no presentation of a report to take away. Okay, now. Um, we would like to, once you are here, we would like to have Which mic? Somebody's mic. This mic? No. Chartered Waterhouse Coopers uh, presenting a 340 page document uh, to SNITS. Well, SNITS Commission Prize Waterhouse Coopers to undertake a review of assets and liabilities of the trusts uh, as of March 2017. Uh, the Prize Waterhouse Coopers were also to undertake a review and baseline assessment of SNITS ICT system. Remember that, uh, that system that raised a lot of controversies. The exercise uh, also to enable SNIT to know the true state of its investment in the country. Well, they've come to the end of that and they are presenting their report. Is a 340-page report to SNIT. Uh, people have been given the opportunity to, to ask questions now, so we join in in that press review. Sitting here. Yes. Yes. Mike, come, come, right. come and sit. Okay. Come. And then take a take, seat. Take, take your questions. Well, th 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 thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, indeed, I did mention that we identified uh, uh, gaps and also some strong points, and in the report have uh, stated clearly what those gaps are. Um, I would not be able to give you any specific details because, again, uh, we have prepared this report for the board and management. And it is them that we have a, you know, catalog what we have found. And uh, I would say, perhaps from our end, all we can say is that the report contains everything that we found at, at, at the state of affairs as a SNET, and then what we consider to be uh, recommendations that can help SNET become a much better organization. So uh, that's all I can say to you this morning. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Obi of course, you are not willing to talk to us about what is in the report. But it's obviously, look, look you are aware of, of the controversy that came out 
not too long ago, about seventy-two million dollar software project. What can you tell us about that? So, what I can tell you, and uh, I think when this story broke, uh, I was in the center of it. Um, what I can tell you is that the project in question was part of um, a larger automation project, which was supposed to automate the business processes of SNET. Um, that project was also part of this um, um, audit or this review that PwC has carried out. Um, the, the issues that at that time we said that we have, uh, have been uh, investigated and documented. Um, the cost of that project has been factored into the report. I think that uh, when I give you, when we photocopy the executive summary, uh, you will be apprised as to what the distribution is and what the numbers are. Um, so that project is subject matter of that report. I think that's all I can say for now. Yes. I want to ask about the state of SNET now. And then in terms of uh, submission, we talked about the fact that certain suspicions were not completely, using his own words, completely true. By how much are they true? Like, Look, before we go any further, we've had deep interactions with Yoko. And I have this document from Yoko. Four people from SNET have been indicted, and they are going to Attorney General's office, maybe today. So don't think anything has been glossed over. Yes, yes, yes. The names are here. Yes. Management, former management. Look, I'll give you the names. I'll give you the names. Ernest Thompson, Juliet Kramer, John Hagen Mensa and Caleb Kweku Afaglu. This document is from Yoko. We are not pushing anything on that carpet. We are working very seriously. It's the figures you want, and in due course, you have them. So don't think the SNIT is uh, conniving with anybody. No, Yoko has gone over, and the report we have from Pricewaterhouse is quite similar to the report we had from uh, Yoko. So the, the, that side has been taken care of. What Pricewaterhouse is doing is trying to up the game so that management will be better, human resource management will be better, investment uh, management will be, you know, is, they are trying to help us manage the place better than before. But so far as criminal activity is concerned, Yoko has already dealt with that. So you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Chairman, let me, let me cr clarify something that uh, Juliet Kramer uh, yes. was, is not and was not former staff. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the owner of the company that supplied us with OBS, the IT system everybody's talking about. He's the owner of that company. So sorry, he's not a staff, but the owner of the company that supplies that with the IT equipment. So Ghanaian workers can be assured under your chairmanship, um, people who will test our with our money. Because Look, let me tell you, Adikofo has been around for a long time. I was responsible for interior. Did you hear anything? I was responsible. What do you mean, not yet? Look, my friend. Well, 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 <laughs> well I, I'm telling you, you won't hear anything. You won't hear anything. Responsible for defense. Did you hear anything? If anything, I went around begging for money to put up a ministry, Kofi Annan and everything. I'm here to serve Ghana. At my age, I don't need anything from SNIT. So I'll make sure that irregularities don't go on. That's why I keep talking about Yoko, Yoko, Yoko. Rest assured. I said if there's any investigative journalist, he can come. 
and we shall give him a room here so that he walks around to see there's nothing going on. We are here to serve the country. We are here to serve organized labor and the pensioner, and that's our main objective. So you have nothing to worry about. Doc, I just needed a yes. name in the media house. I'm Joseph Akabli, I work with Joy FM. Yes. Uh, Doc, just needed a bit of uh, um, details in terms of what you could found with these four individuals you mentioned. Look. Um, come, back. come, Gifty, come. I, I think. Come, Gifty. Uh, Look, leave everything to me. Come. Please read the first and second paragraphs so that they know yeah, I'm not going to hide anything. Look, this is a document from Yoko, and I anticipated this thing will happen. So we shall give you two or small brief paragraphs. We are not going to hide anything. Go ahead. Okay. So the microphone. The, the, uh, I should come and say. Yeah. Yes, go, go and read. You see? I don't want to have anybody to think we are covering up anything. We have nothing to go. Go ahead. First two paragraphs from Yoko. You need to okay. mention it first. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Gifty Anna, company secretary. Okay, so it says on February 24th, 2017, Yoko received a complaint from SNET alleging that the Social Security and National Insurance Trust entered into a contract with Perfect Business Systems, whose chief executive officer and a director is Mrs. Juliet Hassana Kramer for the procurement of. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. You want to hear your voice so <laughs> For the procurement of the operations business suite, the complaint alleged that a total amount of about 70 million US dollars was paid to PBS in respect of the OBS project. The original OBS contract sum was 34.0 million US dollars. But at the time the project was completed, the contract sum had shot up to 66.8 million US dollars and 36 million Ghana cedars. This means that at the end of the OBS project, an additional amount of 32 million US dollars and 36 million Ghana cities was paid to PBS for the first two. Mm -hmm. Yes, people are indicted. People are sorry, oh, okay. people are indicted. Then stop. All right. Five suspects were arrested. Please pay attention. This is what I want you to keep. People have been arrested. Go ahead. <laughs> and they are Ernest, Ernest Thompson, former director general of SNET. Mrs. Juliet Hassana Kramer, CEO, PBS. John Hagan Mensa, former OBS project manager. Caleb Kweku Afaglu, and Thomas Samson Ousu. However, four of them have been cautioned. These include Enes Thompson, Mrs. Juliet Hassana Kramer, John Hagan Mensa, and Caleb Kweku Afaglu. After investigations, the office preferred charges of willfully causing financial loss to the state against Thank you very much. suspects. Yes, you can't tell you everything, but uh, the right thing is being done. So you have the information. Thank you very much. Give to Can I ask one political question? No, no, don't ask political questions here. Um, like, we are done uh, with PCFM. Yes, we'll yes, take yes, another meeting. Another house. one. Um, yes, sir. Right. My name is Daniel Opoku. I work with Sigurd. Um, at the initial stages of this controversy, the former board chairman, Professor Joshua Lando, was also cited mm -hmm. um, for supervising such of instance. Now, based on the work that PwC did, how is it being captured in this report? And then, what are your plans? Are you presenting some of these things beyond local to a special prosecutor for some um, management funders? Look, have you heard anything about Cal uh, Mr. Caleb? No. no. Oh, you have Price Waters representative here asking. This report is so bulky, I, I haven't read all the 340 pages, so he will tell you. Okay. Have you heard anything? Chair, as we indicated, this yes. is an uh, independent review and a baseline assessment, mm -hmm. not an investigation. Yes. And so we look at what was the state absent, not yes. who individual was there or was not there. Uh, that's what Yoko has done, and so I think that perhaps might be in the Yoko report, but okay. not in our report. 
Thank you very much, Mike. So Next. In terms of PwC putting together their reports, uh, some of the names you mentioned, you realize they played an integral part mm -hmm. in uh, securing that software. I just want to find out whether PwC engaged them. And uh, No. We have stated in the report that for any employee who is not currently in the employment of SNAP, we haven't looked into that in the that's, the no, that's fine, Mike. Thank you very much. Yes, next. L last two questions. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'm Nana Yawadi. From? Um, let me say, concern <laughs> um, I'd like to know uh, one year in action, some of your new achievements and some of the things that you have put in place to check corruption. Mr. Chairman, let me take yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I will take that. Yes. So, yes, we've been in uh, the seat for about a year. And, um, so I'll start from when we came, for example. We were having even trouble paying uh, pensions and salaries. Look, you've been asking questions. You must listen to the Director General so that we have something to tell the Ghanaian public. Right. OK? Right. Mr. Michaelado here, who is my Deputy Director General in charge of Finance and Administration, will tell you that uh, each time we had to make certain payments, we had to disinvest uh, some of our near cash instruments in order to raise cash to pay. Um, I can assure you that as of today, uh, we've been able to build a cash reserve, which is about a billion Ghana cities, one billion Ghana cities, in our treasury uh, um, instruments. And then I can also tell you that our management accounts from last year 2017 compared to 2016 show that in 2016 the total the fund lost value to the tune of about 18 to 19 million Ghana cities. In 2017 our management accounts show that we added about 900 978 million Ghana cities to the fund. So whereas 2016 was a loss, 2017, we added about 978 million Ghana cities to it. Um, in broad terms, I mean, those are two figures that basically puts everything in context. We've done a lot of other things, such as we've cut a lot of expenses, uh, travel, there was, uh, in, in 2016, I don't have my thing here. The travel budget, let me have something here. So for example, uh, when we came, the amount budgeted for travel and accommodation was 7.34 million Ghana cities. We went through the year, and we only spent 1.9 million Ghana cities. Basically, I came, and we cut a lot of travel. Mm. Uh, and you had the, the uh, current director general of SNITS uh, at a press briefing where Price Waterhouse uh, Cooper has presented a 340-page report. Uh, this is coming after they were commissioned uh, to, uh, you know, check uh, the status of uh, SNITs after the new administration took over. Uh, we've been hearing very much the chairman of the SNIT Board of Trustees, Dr. Kwame Adokufo, uh, and then the current director general of SNIT, Dr. John Ofori Tenkrai, receiving that report from Price Waterhouse Coopers. We've gotten a lot of assurances uh, that nothing is being covered up at SNITs. Uh, in there, but uh, we've, we also know, do know from the lead presenter of that report from Price Waterhouse Coopers that some gaps have been identified, but also recommendations being made. Uh, and then uh, the chairman of S the SNED board, Dr. Kwame Adukufo, also revealing that Iyoko is leading the criminal investigation into uh, happenings at SNEDs. 
uh, with three former workers, including the former director general, Ernest Thompson, also indicted by Iyoko and a supplier of SNIT as well. There will be more details to share in the coming hours, uh, but stay with us. We've got uh, John News Interactive with Mapito Sibidi coming up. That's it for News Desk today. My name is Mama Vio Keep watching John News.